Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching NewsX. I am Rishabh Gulati. Destiny is a matter of choice, not a matter of chance. Wrote Valmiki, the author of the story written in prose that became an epic for the ages. The story of Ram, of Ravan, of Sita, of Hanuman, of the pious and the understanding of good and evil. For many, it's an article of faith. For some, Jai Shri Ram is a matter of religion. For others, it's the routine of a simple hello. But this epic does not bestow commandments, not proclaim itself the word of God, but of godly deeds of man and woman rooted in a prehistory lost to the mists of time, but made vivid in their retelling. Something historic is happening in Ayodhya. Not a once in a lifetime event, a once in history event. And here we are to witness it. At the very least, a bitter property dispute in the family has been settled to the betterment of the entire family. But perhaps at the most, a cauterization and catharsis is upon us. India, that is Bharat, needs a rediscovery, a second independence, an independence of the mind. For the British left us convinced and brainwashed that we are two nations, made two nations and let division roost as a final contemptuous hurrah. Progress, ladies and gentlemen, is not a straight line. It is gotten and dotted with the ruin of not only empires, but of civilizations. A classical revitalization is now emerging on the face of the planet here in India. A revival of the best of virtue, a renaissance, a punar jagaran. In Europe, a rediscovery of classical times led to Michelangelo and Da Vinci. They led to Newton and a scientific boom. India is now at the cusp of that moment. Far from leaving our lives, Ram Bharose, let us take this moment to free ourselves from the vicissitudes of the past. Let us rediscover who we are. For a people without a history, our children, who neither know whence they came or whither they go. We are alive today, not only from Ayodhya, but from the far corners of this world where the story is told and lived by countless souls, much to our genuine surprise, Let's share that story with you in this special telecast as we kick off from Bali, from Ayutthaya, from Phnom Penh and in Vietnam with our colleagues and reporters that are joining us from across these regions in Southeast Asia. Let's begin in Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you land in Bangkok, you land at the Swarnabhumi International Airport the golden land. Yes, it is no coincidence, it's Sanskrit. It's no coincidence that the head of the Thai state is King Rama the 10th. It is no coincidence that their emblem is the Garuda. It is no coincidence because in the 14th century, just down the flowing river of the river that runs through Bangkok, there stood the kingdom of Ayutthaya with its roots perhaps dating back to the 8th and 9th centuries. In a country that is 95% Buddhist, it is no coincidence that it shares its civilizational roots with Ayodhya. Joining us now on the broadcast is Patpon Sabaitun. He is on location in Ayutthaya in Thailand. Patpon, thank you so very much for not only joining us on this telecast, but doing this special report for us here on NewsX. Uh, I know there's a special report pending after this, but I want to quickly run you through some, some basics. What, what was your experience now that you visited this place? Pat Pon, if you can hear me. Ayutthaya, walking through its historic ground, you're instantly transported back in time. It's like a movie set, but real. Picture the white presses and pet with its grand stupas. This is once a holiest site in the whole kingdom. You can almost hear the prayers echoing through time. 
and then that is Buddha in Wat Pamahatha with fruits around it like nature's embrace is step in it yeah it's a step into a story stories of kings commoners and monks you are walking where history was made among architectural marvels that was once the envy of the world Ayutthaya isn't just a bunch of old buildings it's a living testament to Thailand's rich layered history right. where every ruin has a story to tell it's a surreal experience okay feeling Sur surreal. connected to the past that shaped our present you, you know Pat Pon it is of course a surreal experience you know thinking about it and imagining it for us as, as you visited there and I'm sure it's obviously part of your folklore what do you know about the connection Ayodhya, Ayutthaya, what do you know in, in your folklore, in your history about, about this city, about this empire? When you really dive into Ayutthaya history, it's like uncovering a hidden chap chapter of the world story. This wasn't just a Thai city, it was a global metropolis of time. Imagine the street bustling with traders from Japan, India, the Gulf of Persia, and even Europe. Each brought a piece of their world, creating this amazing cultural mosaic. Ayutthaya was where you could find Japanese samurai, Portuguese missionaries, and Dutch merchants all in one place. And this cultural blend influenced everything from Thai architecture to cuisine, blending spices and styles. So when we think of Ayutthaya, it's not just about Thailand history. It's about how this city was a crucial crossroads in the story of tro global trade and culture. It's a fascinating. It's fascinating how Ayutthaya's legacy is interwoven into the tapestry of world history. So, <coughs> visiting the place, both now and the past, what, what stands out for people watching this telecast all over the world and here in India? What, what stands out in terms of the historicity, the architecture, uh, the still extant temples, the ruins? The resilience of Ayutthaya ruins is what strikes you the most. Right. Take a walk there and you will see the spice century of history, invasion and natural disaster. These structures stand defiantly. Look at the Wat Loka with this giant reclining Buddha. It's not just about a statue, it's a symbol of endurance. All the stone grounds of Wat Rajaburana soaring skyward, defying time. These runes tell stories of resilience, of a civilization that faced adversities, yet left behind timeless beauty. Every crack in the stone, every overgrown root tells a story of survival and perseverance. Okay. Yutia's runes are a testament to the enduring spirit of Thai culture, standing proudly as a reminder of the past that continues to inspire okay. us. Okay, oh, but, but Patpon, how many people are, are, are aware, I mean, before we, you know, we, we, we reached out and, and, and our conversation began, how many people are actually aware of this connection between Ayodhya, which is the birthplace of Lord Ram, and of course, uh, your current head of state is, is King Ram X, uh, and of course, Ayodhya, where you're standing? The connection between Ayutthaya and Ayodhya in India is more than just a historical trivia. Right. It's a thread linking to great cultures. Yeah. Ayutthaya is named after Ayodhya, the birthplace of Lord Ramas in Indian mythology, signify a deep cultural and spiritual bond Thailand share with India. These ties are visible in our religious practices, festivals, and even in Thai epics, the Ramakian, which is our version of Ramayana. This historical connection is fascinating. It's a testament to the flow of ideas, beliefs, and culture between Thailand and India over centuries. Right. Walking through Ayutthaya, you are reminded of these ancient bonds, architectural designs, the spiritual practices, even the stories told, are echoing a shared heritage. This Indo and Thai connection enriches our understanding of Ayutthaya. Okay. Give is a depth that goes right. beyond. Okay, all right. So, so, so for people, Patpon, watching here in India, can can you tell us about uh, the royal lineage that, of course, uh, uh, currently uh, we have King Rama the uh, Tenth. Uh, what is the dynasty? How long back does it does it trace its roots? I'm told Ayutthaya itself is about 14th century, perhaps even before that. The Chakri dynasty began in King Rama the First era. After the fall of Ayutthaya and Thonburi mark a significant era in Thai history. Mm -hmm. It's a complex narrative of resilience, adaptation, and nation building. 
This dynasty, which continues to this day, has seen Thailand through major transformation. King Rama I established Bangkok as a new capital, shaping the early contours of modern Thailand. The dynasty's history intertwined with Thailand's journey through colonial pressures and modernization. Each monarch, from King Rama IV's diplomatic engagement to King Rama IX's development effort, played the role in navigating these challenges. It's a history marked by efforts to maintain sovereignty and cultural identity amidst global changes. The legacy of the Japri dynasty is visible in many aspects of Thailand, reflecting a history of governance that has been shaped and shaped by the evolving context of the nation and the world. Okay, so now, so you mentioned the the Ramakane, which is of course uh, the Ramayana. Uh, have you seen it performed? Have you read stories from it? What do you understand about it? Uh, about about the story itself? Witnessing the Ramakian performance is like stepping into a vibrant mythical world. It's not just about entertainment, it's a cultural journey. The Ramakian, Thailand's version of the Indian epic Ramayana, is a cornerstone of Thai culture. Its influence permeates our art, dance, and even the daily life. The performance is spectacular with elaborate costumes, intricate masses, and the fusion of music dance and drama that captivates the audience. Its storytelling is very finest, bringing ancient myth to life and connecting us to, to roots. It's a cultural beacon illustrate the values, struggle and triumphs of the Thai people. It's a unique experience blending mythology, culture and arts, uh, telling the richness of Thai heritage. Okay, uh, before we get you that report from, from Ayutthaya, uh, what about tourism per se in Ayutthaya, both for, for Thai nationals and a lot of people who visit Thailand, of course, from across the world, uh, but you know, think of other tourist destinations in Pattaya and Bangkok. Ayutthaya itself and its historical tourism, uh, how is it understood and what has been done to highlight it? Promoting Ayutthaya is about telling the story to the world. It's not just about the rooms, it's about the life that was one drive there. To boost tourism, we need to think beyond conventional methods. Imagine immersive virtual reality experiences where visitors can walk through the ancient city as it's peaked. Interactive exhibitions could bring this city to life, engaging craft, cuisine, and performances. This storytelling through apps, online platform and social media can capture the imagination of global audiences. And we should also focus on sustainable tourism, preserving Ayutthaya heritage while telling the story of its history. And we can transform Ayutthaya from historical site into a vibrant, educational and unforgettable okay. experience. All right. Okay. Uh what do you feel? Just, just your, just you know, your your thoughts on this. You know, just as 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 a, a, a Thai national. What, what do you feel that we can do collectively to highlight the historical relations between India and Thailand? What what more can we do in our present generation? Strengthening Indo and Thai relations goes beyond diplomatic gestures. It's a vast celebrating our shared history. We could start with joint cultural festivals showcasing the fruition of Thai and Indian arts, crafts and cuisine, collaborative academics programs focusing on our shared history, language and religious studies would foster deeper understanding and also co-produce documentaries and exhibitions would highlight our intertwined past. These initiatives would build bridges between our people, fostering deeper appreciation of our shared roots. It's about creating a dialogue that goes beyond official channels, weaving the rich tapestry of the Indo and Thai relations okay. into a fabric of our society. All right. Okay. All right. You know what, Patpon? Thank you so much uh, for just having this this quick conversation with us. I, I want to take up our, uh, our viewers straight to the report you just you just filed and sent to us uh, from uh, Ayutthaya uh, just to get a glimpse before we open this up to a, to a larger conversation for people joining us uh, from Thailand to have this forward. Patpon, thank you so much. Here's the report that Patpon has filed, especially for us on NewsX from Ayutthaya. Let's listen in.
This is the temple of the Emerald Buddha, Thailand's most sacred religious Buddhist structure. Around the complex is a two-kilometer-long wall with murals of the Ramayana, depicting the story of Phra Rama or Lord Ram, the hero of the Ramakain. The national epic of Thailand and an integral part of Thai culture and art. This is the current king of Thailand, Vajira Longkorn of the Chakri dynasty, known popularly as King Ram the Tenth. It was his ancestor Vajira Vud, the sixth king of erstwhile Siam, who came to be known as King Ram. To this day, the king of Thailand is crowned by Brahmins of Gorakhpur and Buddhist monks in a ceremony that is laced with both Hindu and Buddhist rituals. Almost every street in Thailand has a shrine worshipping Lord Brahma, the creator. When you land in Thailand, the airport is called Suvarnabhumi, Sanskrit for Golden Land. So how does a Buddhist majority Thailand continue to preserve its Hindu roots and influence? The story goes back to the kingdom of Ayodhya, 3,500 kilometers from Lord Ram's Ayodhya in India. Today, NewsX takes you for the first time to the ancient city of Ayodhya, where remnants of a glorious Hindu kingdom of Thailand continue to run deep within the ruins. Behind me, are the remains of what were once majestic palaces, bustling markets, and sacred temples. Founded in 1350 by King Utong or Rama Tibeti I, Ayutthaya was the second Siamese capital after Sikotai. For over four centuries, it drove at the center of politics, trade, and culture, attracting traders from across the globe. Ayutthaya was renowned for its meticulous structure urban layout, marked by the roads, canals, and moats encircling its major building. This design strategically utilized the location of Mystery River and featured a highly advanced, globally unique hydraulic system for water management, showcasing the city's technological prowess during that time. Hindu motifs, inspired by the Ramayana and other epics, are intricately carved alongside Buddhist iconography, illustrating the coexistence and interweaving of these two major religions in Ayutthaya history. This fusion of style not only adds to the aesthetic appeals, but also tells a story of the city's rich, pluralistic past. Just nine years later, in 1991, Ayutthaya, along with other historical parks like Sukhothai, Si Sachinalai, and Gampante, was announced by UNESCO as the World Heritage Sites. Here in Ayutthaya, you'll find 425 archaeological sites, both within and outside the ancient city walls. The tradition of Thai kings taking the name of Lord Ram dates back to King Ramati Bodhi, the founder and first king of a glorious Thai kingdom. I'm currently standing at Wat Param or Rama Temple, a site of immense historical and religious significance. Here, amidst these sacred walls and towering statues, one can feel the spiritual pulse of ancient Ayutthaya. Wat Param in Ayutthaya represents more than a religious site. 
It's a historical landmark erected on King Zutong cremation site. The temple's architecture, which is blend of Hindu and Buddhist influences, stands as a resilient symbol of Thailand's diverse past and the enduring faith of its people, inviting visitors to delve deep into the his history of UTI. Despite the vast 3,500 kilometers separating them, it's profoundly anchored in their mutual reference for Lord Rama. This chair adoration goes beyond religious practices, reflecting in the intertwined mix and cultural narratives that have shaped Thai tradition over the ages. The significance of Lord Rama extends beyond Yutia to Ratanakosin era, which is the current era in Thailand. When King Rama I, initiator of Siam, Chakri dynasty, became king in 1782, he chose the name Rama Tibodi, echoing Ayutthaya's founding monarch and Lord Rama. This sets a precedent with all following Thai kings choosing the name Rama, showing the enduring influence of Lord Rama in Thai tradition. The erstwhile city of Ayutthaya is a glimpse into the rich Hindu history of Thailand and how the footprint of Lord Ram extends well beyond India. Bureau Report, News X. All right, that of course was uh, Pat Pon uh, Sabaitun filing that report for us uh, from Ayutthaya in Thailand. Pat Pon, thank you very, very much uh, for uh, making the effort and doing this so that we could present it uh, in the build up to what is, of course, a very important day. Really appreciate it. Now, let me open up without further ado uh, to guests joining us uh, to give us a little bit of. Uh, conversational understanding. Uh, uh, Dr. Pavani Boonsam is assistant professor at the Thammasat University in Thailand. Uh, I'm told she is uh, currently in Bodh Gaya for the Pran Pratishta celebrations. Also joining us is uh, uh, Raju Bachumal Manwani. He has been the secretary of the World Hindu Congress in 2023 in Bangkok. He's the former director of the India Thai Chambers of Commerce. Uh, he's been in Thailand for the past 36 years and he's also a spokesperson for the Vishwa Hindu Parishad uh, in Thailand. Uh, uh, good day to all of you from different parts uh, of, of the world and of course uh, in India. Uh, let me quickly begin with you, Dr. Pavani. So what is the uniqueness particularly of the, of the Rama K N Mam uh, that is performed in Thailand? Uh, in Rama K N, actually in Thailand, we perform in uh, many kinds of performance, but the original usually in Korn or in Marx dance drama, which is the famous one. And this is like, uh, nowadays it performs just only Rama, Ramayana or Ramakian in Thailand. So, and also uh, apart from the Korn Marx, in the puppetry or in uh, shadow, the shadow also play in Ramakian as well. Okay, all right. Ma'am, could you just stay with us? Let me get uh, uh, Raju Manwani ji. Raju ji, you know, like I began this telecast and I said, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating realization just landing at Swarnabhumi International Airport. And you know it's not a coincidence. It comes from Sanskrit, right? Uh, and yes. the honest truth is, it is, it is slipped from our imagination. An obvious uh, historic cultural link that is going back maybe 1500 years at least. So what has been your, your understanding of it, having lived there for 36 years? Have you been to Ayutthaya? What do you make of the Garuda, of the Sanskritization in what is 95% a Buddhist country? Well, uh, Rishabh, first let me congratulate uh, NewsX for doing this uh, wonderful uh, telecast. I mean, br br bridging the connect between Southeast Asia and uh, Ayutthaya and uh, India in general. Uh, you mentioned when you land at Swarnabhum, uh, you are astonished and fascinated by the name of Swarnabhumi or, or a Swarnabhum as we call it over here. But uh, don't forget that as you depart Bangkok, you are witness to another scene from Indian uh, history and culture, which is a Samudra Manthan. So that itself will give you the deep connect between the cultures of uh, Bharat and Thailand. Now, uh, coming back to your question, yes, I've been to Ayutthaya. I've been there once, long time ago. And uh, going by road and coming back by boat is an astonishing journey. The Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, in I think it was 1767 around, where uh, the city of Ayutthaya was practically 
uh, ravaged and the temples destroyed, which is what led to the moving of the kingdom from Ayutthaya to uh, to Bangkok. And uh, you talking about the anywhere you go around Thailand. I mean, I came here in 1988, and the roads here are very commonly named. You can easily, if you're from Bharat, you can easily associate with those names. When you hear the language, and language, let me say, coming from Bharat, and uh, everybody over there speaks two, three languages at least, and coming from there, learning to speak Thai is very easy. Because uh, I would say, if not 10 to 15, if not more percentage of the vocabulary is very common. You know, absolutely common. Plus, the uh, if you go to uh, universities, you'll find Ma Saraswati's statue everywhere. Uh, Lord Ganesh is celebrated very well over here. Prapi Kanet, as we call them over here, is revered by the Thais a lot. And uh, I will tell you an instance. Uh, uh, last year, we had celebrated Diwali over here. And in one corner, we had kept... Uh, uh, VHP had arranged, Thailand had arranged a booth with idols of uh, uh, Prapi Ganesh, that's Lord Ganesha, uh, Lakshmi and Saraswati. And within a matter of two days, the footfall was approximately 100,000 people. And it was a very small area and 100,000 people, out of which 95% were ethnic Thais. So that you can see the connect between uh, Indian tradition and the Thai population over here. We do celebrate the annually uh, big festival for Lord Ganesha, right. uh, the Ganesh Chaturthi with a Visarjan at the same time. And there too, we have thousands and thousands of Thais coming and joining us. So that connect is deep and it's not just superficial, but we really need to use this opportunity. You know, okay. I had this feeling that, give me give me a minute yeah, more, right? Please, please yeah, yeah, please finish. Yeah. Uh, Lord Ram, as uh, the Mariada Purushottam, as we know him, is is known for many qualities. And it is these particular qualities that endear him to Thais over here, which is why they see those qualities in the king. You know, Ram is known for is him being a son, a brother and a king. You know, so these things are what Thais look forward to in a a model citizen and if we can uh, i would say i would not say sell but let's say if we can extol the virtues that uh, lord ram gives us and if we can get people not only from our country but from all over the world to emulate them in even a minor way in even a small way if you can succeed to do 10 15 20 percent of mm. what he did you know I think the world will be a better place. You know, you know, no, true that. There is, a, there is a larger reality uh, of understanding. As I mentioned, classical revivalism, it need not and must not be taken only in a religious context. And I think we, we muck it up sometimes because that's how we view it. Uh, there has to be some ability to take a, a, a larger bird's eye view on this. Let me get uh, Dr. Pavani back into this conversation. Dr. Pavani, so what is on that thought of what uh, Rajuji was mentioning? Well, what is your understanding of, of Ram? or the Ramayana itself and the story of good and evil? In my understanding, uh, you know, like uh, in Thai, uh, Ramakian or Ramayana is so it's, uh, epic and it's like a fantastic story. But in India, I found like Rama is the real person, is, is the good king and you know, is he virtuous and he uh, like uh, he uh, symbolics of uh, the king virtual and drama. Mm. Yeah, kind and, of. Uh, the just symbol of a victory of the good over the evils good of the kingship of the sacred power of the king whom is everyone's must be obey and serve and show like absolute of loyalty so this is i feel like rama is a real person and the ideal king okay 
Okay. And I also yes. think like this is that's why, you know, in Thailand, as the past, we used to be the absolute monarchy. And as like the Rama is might be the symbol of the idea of king. And that's okay. why they follow. Okay. All right. So, so ma'am, ma ma what about Ayutthaya Ramayana specifically? So, yeah, so, so, so what about Ayutthaya, the, the, both the kingdom and the city? Today, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, the largest complex uh, in the world like this. Have you ever visited, ma'am? What do you understand of it? Yeah, I used to visit it, but I never performed in Ayutthaya. Right. Yes for, yes, for that event. So that's why I cannot answer in the way. Because I, I don't have the experience to perform on that place, but I... I used to visit Ayutthaya many times because of it's like the one of my favorite places in Thailand. Yeah, it's very nice place. Yeah, for historical okay. place in Thai. All right, all right. Just stay with me, ma'am. Quickly, I'm, I'm already tight on time, but I want to get Rajuji back into this conversation. She's me patiently listening uh, to the reports. Rajuji, so th so I have to ask you the but obvious, sir. You know, I had this moment uh, when I was in Italy and ended up in Pompeii, and everybody wanted there to ask me of the places to visit in India. Similarly, sir, I mean, not a people, there are th thousands of people who come from India to Thailand, but they're looking at Pattaya and Bangkok and, you know, Koh Samui and all these other places. Uh, Ayutthaya doesn't, uh, fig you know, fit into the figment of imagination. Uh, you know, people really don't know that the Garuda is a national emblem. It, it sort of escapes the attention. How do we then say that, okay, if the Thai people come and visit Ayodhya and Indians come and see the complexes in Ayutthaya is absolutely fascinating. I agree with you. I think that's a very good idea, Rishabh. Uh, now, what we can start with is, uh, it, see, the Ramakian in Thailand is written in a very high, absolutely high, sophisticated language, which is not uh, very easily accessible to the people. You know, it's accessible, but it's a bit beyond understanding, if you know what I mean. Uh, what we can do is, and I've been, uh, I want to put it to my uh, VHP Thailand committee over here, is that we can get a, a good Thai translation for every generation over here so that they can understand this, you know. And once we have, and now that you have mentioned uh, Indian tourists coming to Thailand, yes, I think what the interest that uh, Ayodhya has uh, awakened in people, they have come to realize what it is all about. I'm sure the Thai government and the tourism authority over here would be very keen to do that. Ayutthaya is a beautiful place to go and see, you know, and it, it's driving distance. I mean, from Bangkok, it'll take you barely about 80 to 90 minutes to reach there. You know, the roads are excellent and it will give a good perspective of what uh, the ancient temples over here were. And let me tell you one more thing. The temples over here are ancient temples. Even the ruins are very well maintained very clean, very organized with, they'll give you an entire history of what happened, where, when. So for, I think a Bhartiya tourist coming here. Yeah. I think it's, it's going okay, to be. Okay. So relevant. let's put it together. We'll, we'll also do some research. You know, you guys can put together maybe a program. We can publicize it here in India for people visiting Thailand. It's an excellent day trip to make. You said it's an hour or so from, uh, uh, from Bangkok. It's an excellent day trip to make a uh, perfect for a, for a touring party just to, just to uh, visit quickly. Uh, Rajuji, your thoughts, of course, on the Ram temple uh, about to be inaugurated in Ayodhya. Oh, you know, I'm so envious of you people sitting in uh, Bharat and we so far away over here. Uh, the excitement is so palpable. I mean, it's, it just, it's I'm getting goose pimples right now. I wish I was there. I wish uh, we could be part of the celebration. But it, it's not going to be any less over here. Yeah. I mean, the, the Bhartiyas, the Indians over here are absolutely agog. The excitement over here is almost unbearable. You know, the, our celebrations have started uh, from a few days ago yeah. and it continues. You go to every Hindu temple over here, something or the else is going on. Houses are being lit. On the commerce side, let me tell you, the diyas are out of stock in the market. You can't okay. buy diyas anymore. All right. So we do it with electronic. Okay. And we have a big program at the Dev okay. Mandir, which is a hundred year old mandir over here, uh, where we're going to have everything, whatever, Kirtan, Bhajan, okay. the so, uh, so we wish you, uh, wish you a good time, sir. And, uh, you know, now as we've discovered, uh, it's uh, actually not far away at all. Uh, 
uh, it's uh, it's closer no. than one can possibly imagine. Uh, Raju ji, thank you so much. Uh, also to Dr. Pavani, thank you so much, ma'am. Have a good time. Uh, we shift base uh, from Ayutthaya in Thailand uh, to the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh, where Nehru Prai is joining us on the broadcast, who's been uh, putting together a ground report for us for the past several days. Nehru, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, now, now help us understand now the Vats. Uh, that you've been visiting, which is of course, uh, a, a a, the, it translates into temple. Uh, how was your experience uh, visiting these these wards, especially the one that there you are currently at, which I'm told now is a uh, is a Buddhist uh, uh, temple uh, in Thailand. What for, what what is fascinating about this? Today is the weekend, and this is something that very really interesting. That uh, I take a time to come to uh, Wat Nom. Uh, because it's the only place in uh, Phnom Penh that you can uh, see the nature. There's a tree behind me, right. and there's a temple as well over there, like Buddhist temple uh, that have an element of Hinduism inside the pagoda as well. As you know, that Phnom Penh is really busy with the number of many cars, so it's the city itself is polluted. So this is the only place to have tree that people come to get fresh air and uh, refresh. Okay, so, so, so still, is, so people people come not just you know for for pious reasons uh, for uh, just just to visit. Uh, you know, speaking of the temple that you just mentioned, uh, it's it's in the imagination of everyone is is Angkor Wat. What can you tell us about the history of Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat was very interesting. It's a masterpiece of Cambodian architecture at the height of the Khmer civilization. At the 12th century, it was built under the reign of the king uh, Soria Warman II. So it was devoted to uh, Lord uh, Vishnu in Hinduism. Because Cambodia back then was Hindu before it was uh, converted into uh, Buddhism. Uh, however, even now the practice of Hinduism is still remain in Cambodia even though we don't really consider like Cambodian people as uh, Hindu, mm. yet the practice of Hinduism is still in uh, the root of the uh, Khmer people. Uncle Wat is a pride yeah. Cambodian. We even put it on the flag of our first nation. And it was like uh, the masterpiece of uh, the civilization of the Khmer Empire that the Cambodian now so proud of. And we want to preserve it. And when talking about Cambodia, uh, not many people know, but are you talking about like Angkor Wat Temple? It's like very well known to okay. So, uh, uh, so, 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 where does it and figure in? Yeah, yes, you know we've heard of it. A lot of people now visit here, visit Angkor Wat especially uh, from India. So, how important has it figured in the history and culture of Cambodia? If you can still hear us, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Around the world, there are only a few countries to have the architecture, the temple, or the flag, and Cambodia is one of them. We have Uncle Wat on the flag of Cambodia. Cambodia never forgot uh, Uncle Wat. There are some researchers, their history has mentioned that Uncle Wat was lost, but actually it's not. Actually, it's never been rediscovered. The Cambodian people have always lived together with Uncle Wat. Even though we changed the city from Siem Reap to uh, Phnom Penh, but Siem Reap was still a province of Cambodia. And right. people would go there and different king even after the Khmer Empire still continue to go to Angkor Wat and it never been lost. Okay, so, so, so you're mentioning that you know a lot of you know what we would describe you know and uh, it's, it's difficult to put into a context of what we understand as Hinduism but in terms of the practice in Cambodia that you say that some of the practices continue what are the kinds of rituals or you know uh, if it is deities uh, that are worshipped uh, what is the most common? Even Cambodia considered the Buddhist country at the yes. moment, but the practice of Hinduism in the spirit of Cambodian still remained the same. Before Hinduism arrival, Cambodian believed in animism, believing in the tree, believing in the spirits. And then Hinduism arrived. We devote ourselves to uh, Hinduism, to different uh, uh, God in Hinduism. And then even now, Buddhism, we still worship, we still pray to different gods, including uh, Lord Vishnu, okay. Lord Shiva, uh, Lord uh, Ganesha, for example. Okay, all right. So, so, uh, so Shiva and avatars of Shiva. What? what okay, I'm told uh, it's called the Riam Care, and and forgive my pronunciation. Which is the version uh, 
uh, where you are of the national poem that is based on the Ramayana. Uh, is, is that is that correct? Story of Yimke or Ramayana have been told since I was young age, and there was a TV show. They also like a theater play. They also like uh, the shadow puppet uh, telling story from every corner of Cambodia, and even Buddhist temple also depict the story in on the wall. As you go to Angkor Wat, for example, there are story of uh, Ramayana. Uh, cowing on the gallery okay. of the temple. All right. I, I know you've sent us a report from the temple that is right behind you. So uh, I'm going to play out the report in just a second. Quickly, uh, how important then is it? Is the Riyamkar uh, or the Ramayana to the culture of Cambodia in the present day? Riyamkar is a story that actually based on uh, Ramayana of India. And this story has been told by uh, people who live in Cambodia land for uh, hundreds of years. Like, I have been told this story since I was young. And then it was told by my grandfather to my grandfather, my grandfather, my father to me. And we also incorporate that into the curriculum of the education to study uh, the story of Rimke or Ramayana uh, about the loyalty, about the bravery, about uh, the story, the what happened in uh, the past and this uh, Rimke or Ramayana is, um, has been called to almost every temple, uh, Ansan temple in Cambodia okay. as well as to the Buddhist temple in, uh, okay. in Cambodia. Okay, all right. What, okay, Nehru, you know what we're going to do is uh, let's, uh, for our viewers watching, uh, as I mentioned, you filed a report of the temple behind you. Let's play that out. Uh, for our viewers. Uh, this is in the capital of Cambodia. This is in Phnom Penh. Uh, it's called a Wat, which is of course a, is a temple. It is now a Buddhist uh, a structure. Uh, but have a look at uh, the Indic influences uh, in the Cambodian capital in this report. Let's listen in. While India is the land of multiple religious sites important to Hinduism and thousands of temples, the world's largest Hindu temple is in fact not in India, but in the Southeast Asian nation of Cambodia. This is Angkor Wat, the world's largest Hindu temple and the world's largest religious monument. It is in fact one of the few temples with statues of the Trinity, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiv. Built in the early 12th century by King Suryavarman II of Cambodia, the king of the Khmer Empire. Angkor Wat is today a historic structure with displays and illustrations of the Ramayana, the Mahabharat and even the Samudra Manthan the tale of the churning of the seas. From Lord Ram taking a position to kill in the final battlefield, to Bhishma Pitama being pinned by Arjun's arrows, Angkor Wat is a living testimony of how Hinduism continues to thrive in Cambodia. 300 kilometers from Angkor Wat, in the capital of Cambodia, lies another magnificent temple, the Wat Form. It is a Buddhist shrine with a total of five statues, four of Lord Buddha and one of Lord Vishnu. Continuing with the tradition of Angkor Wat, this Buddhist shrine also has murals of the Riyamkar, the Cambodian adaptation of the epic Ramayana, which continues to be a part of Cambodian art and culture. Today, NewsX takes you for the first time ever to the Wat Pham Temple in Cambodia's capital city, an embodiment of the amalgamation of Cambodia's Buddhist and Hindu past. I am at Wat Nung or Nung Don Peng, the name of the capital city of Cambodia. There was a legend that goes back when there was a woman named Peng who found four Buddha in the floating trees. 
three of them were in the form of Buddha, which made from brown, brass, and marble. Also, another statue in the form of Vishnu, with four hands, holding staff, chain, lotu, and snail. She brought them here to this area and then turning up to a place that they can put this statue for people who live around this area to worship. Year by year, this place turned out to be a mountain, a man-made mountain that people come here to worship. If you come here with me, you will see that there are three Buddha statues and also a temple of Buddhism that dedicate mainly for Buddhism that people here will come to pray as well as a shrine of Hinduism that dedicated to Lord Vishnu. You would like to see how it like? Please follow me. Despite this mountain is dedicated to Buddhism, yet the word Phnom actually is coming from Sanskrit, which means Meru or mountains. So we got people that come here for uh, worshiping uh, different religions. And the mountain itself was enshrined of the king Pinyat in the 1474, the founder of the capital city of Phnom Penh, with the big stupa on the top of the mountain. And every year, like more stupa, more enshrined has been uh, installed on this mountain. During the Khmer Empire from the 9th to the 15th century, Cambodia was the Hindu powerful state dominate most Southeast Asia. Most ruler depict of Hindu religion, especially on those temples that men uncle today. As you can see one behind me is a shrine that de devoted to Hinduism as well, where Lord Vishnu stayed inside. There was a time in the history of Cambodia that have changed the religion of Cambodia from Hinduism to Buddhism based on the story of the Prince uh, Thomalinda, who went to Sri Lanka to study Buddhism for 10 years, and he brought back Buddhism to Cambodia. And with his power, so how it's converted the country into Buddhism up until nowadays. Yet the remain of practice of Hinduism still in Cambodia. As you can see, you go to temple, go to Pagoda, the existence of the symbol of Hinduism, for example, the Naga that protect uh, the water, the protection of the temple. And uh, this is the symbol that uh, remain in Cambodia up until now. Wat Phnom has become the most popular place among international tourists, local tourists, as well as the religious tourists who will come here for different reasons. Some will come here for the temple that is dedicated to Buddhism and also to the shrine of Hinduism. Despite being a nation of merely 1,500 practicing Hindus, every corner of Cambodia continues to be a beautiful reminder of the temple nation's ancient links to Hinduism and India. Okay, all right. Uh, Nehru Priya, thanks very much uh, for getting us that uh, lovely report. Uh, appreciate you uh, joining us and putting this together the last few days. Uh, in this special telecast uh, to the build-up of the temple inauguration that we're doing here. Uh, let me quickly introduce our guest joining us, uh, 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 Dr. M. Rameshwaran, who is the president of the Khmer Tamil Sangam in Cambodia, is joining us on the broadcast. Dr. Rameshwaran, what a, what a treat to have you. Uh, Stephen Patrick Fernandez uh, is joining us. He's the art artistic director of IPAG in the Philippines. Uh, let me begin with you, uh, Rameshwaran ji. You know, let's, let's start with the obvious, sir which is the most recognizable, the most iconic. Uh, let's go back to the 12th century in the year 1122 when King Surya Varman II, uh, aided and advised by Divakar Pandit, decide that they are going to build a <coughs> grand structure dedicated to the Lord Vishnu, which we today know, of course, is Angkor Wat, that in later years, uh, under the uh, one of his descendants, was converted into Buddhist site. What do you know about the story of Angkor Wat, sir? Mr. Rame, Dr. Rameshwaran, yes. Okay, I will talk. Okay. Actually, is uh, ruled <coughs> kingdoms uh, to the uh, Jay Verman number two. He is built by the 40 years the build. Uh, seventh uh, the Jay Verman is a complete the uh, Angkor Temple. Actually, is the connection with uh, our South India Kanjipuram, Kanjipuram to and Cambodia is connection. Uh, Kumara Kounder, his name the Kumara Kounder. 
after that the kumara counter is uh, coming from cambodia <coughs> and uh, one nandi verman nandi verman also is uh, from uh, here here to bold go like cambodia after that uh, 40 years back a uh, lot of the problem with the poipot poipot is the killer of the one guy is from uh, army is a lot a uh, million people is kill in cambodia is a statue after is the jay verman and surya verman nandi verman after is the cambodia to and relation i am talking about our relation to india and cambodia yes uh, okay then uh, after kanjipuram is uh, soma devi is soma devi is the queen after the marriage is the soma devi then connection with the india to and cambodia connection then uh, cambodia makkal is the all the people and cambodian people is still is uh, follow the our hindu culture whatever the culture is uh, doing our uh, follow the our hindu culture if a uh, uh, example i will go to the house the first time i am enter the house is always say uh, i will say india namaskaram he says suside so sabai is the camera camera language so after you take me in the house he give me the water and sitting and take care everything is follow the hindu but uh, the cambodia is ruled by the kingdom after everything complete ready is all follow only buddhism the hinduism is not uh, under present but still is, uh, is going on and relationship okay so uh, you know <clears throat> interacting with people back in india knowing full well that you had yeah. a shivaite tradition then of course a yeah. vaishnavite tradition which is what angkor wat represents it was a vishnu temple then of course a buddhist tradition uh, which is only yeah. present in modern day which of course also has roots uh, in both gaya in 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 india the yeah. it is not incidental sir that means for 2000 years uh, there has been an, an indic civilizational link across this region uh, have we sort of lost touch or forgotten about it what's happened to us because it's so obvious you live it every day yeah but uh, one more thing the lot of the mang everyone is coming from budagaya and varnasi learn more and sanskrit and teaching and training then i back, is back to cambodia and teach to local people still is a respect to our hindu culture okay so uh, is is that well understood in cambodia because how does cambodia look at india uh, you know at today uh, because is it does it look like a, at a trade partner or does it look like uh, a country which has civilizational links between the two of us okay uh, actually is right now is uh, uh, cambodia is a wonderful nice city is a uh, 24 cities there is a wonderful city all is the uh, same like our india anyway you can go anywhere you can go nothing problem uh, all the everything is good professional everything very nice people is uh, put respect and take care also really i love it i stay okay. in okay okay but but is there a recollection do do ordinary cambodians uh join the dots like we are joining today that mm. uh, there is a civilizational link uh, with india mm. do ordinary cambodians see india as as a mm. civilizational linkage a uh, civilization sharing it is um i think so i don't know but i cannot i don't know <laughs> yeah so no i'm trying to say between the two culture let me use the word culture instead of civilization do the two oh. do ordinary cambodians understand that so many of the roots of their culture are from india uh, okay culture is a cambodian is all follow the culture but actually is the, you are doing the pongal tibawali is a follow the uh, chumban day is like chumban day what of us will is a two april uh, every april is have the one uh, even is a lot of people king the family all is coming same like uh, tibawali and uh, pongal is a culture is a follow Okay. everything same okay just stay with us uh, dr rameshwaran let me quickly get uh, mr fernandez into this co- conversation also he is from the philippines now mr fernandez uh, you know you have your own interpretation uh, of of the ramayana in its is in musical form going further on to the philippines is it common practice understood as well the ramayana and the story of ram the ramayana is a uh, requirement in schools reading requirement for literature including the mahabharata it ends that it ends in that manner and i will i will explain why if you look at the map the philippines is found in the peripheries of mainland asia and perhaps of all the asian countries we were that country that was most colonized over 400 years uh, effectively erasing and deleting what major 
contributions and connections we've had with mainland Asia. However, a lot of our derivatives in our folklore and in our narratives have the Ramayana element. But they are not versions of the Ramayana, but derivatives of the Ramayana. Therefore, I would say that while India and even um, the Hindu and the Buddhist uh, civilization have done uh, great connections with us, our uh, location at the fringes of Asia has made us perhaps the least link with the mainland Asia. However, we are doing a lot of things to to uh, to retrieve what is our heritage. And one of these is putting up a, a Ramayana version. We have had the privilege of performing in Ayodha during the Kutsava. Yeah. And uh, this uh, has somehow helped us, our students and our contemporary agencies, relink our history back to to, to, to India, but even in the last month, in the last two months, while uh, the Hindu and Buddhist influences may not be as strong here in the Philippines, we've had the chance to represent the Philippines in the Panji Festival, although this is not directly India, but uh, okay. the, 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 so, so, the so, influences. Okay, Fernandez, yeah. what, what do you understand when we say, you know, because we're discussing Cambodia before this, so and I and Thailand. So in Cambodia, you can say that, okay, Angkor Wat, 1122, Surya Varman II comes and builds a Vishnu temple. In Thailand, a city like Ayutthaya, uh, which literally translates from Ayodhya. Uh, but in the Philippines, is there, a, 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 you know, either a Vaishnavite tradition or a Shivite tradition? You mentioned the Ramayana no, also. There is, there is none. What we have are very, very super artifacts. Although the traditions that we have, besides literature, is the language, uh, the, the, the borrowing of, uh, of, of Sanskrit, a lot of Sanskrit terms, and uh, very, very uh, little uh, artifacts that tell that once we were under this great civilization. So what we have here are small temples. It is not, we do not have great temples because it was uh, the, 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 the legacy of, of our colonizers to erase whatever indigenous and whatever Asian cultures we have. Okay, so uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Fernandez uh, telling you, in the Filipino language, the word for hope is asa, which is exactly right. the same as Sanskrit. These are not coincidences, yes. ladies and gentlemen. So how do we discover it, Mr. Fernandez? Uh, how do we dis rediscover these linkages? How do modern day new generation, Gen Z, of Filipinos and Gen Z of Indians, and there are 600 million of them, how do they reconnect? Well, very, very important, of course, is education. Very, very important is to get back into that experience because it's the same experience we all, we all Asian peoples have. So I, I think that there has to be some redoing, retooling of not only our uh, background in our heritage, but in the, in the schools that we have or even in social media. And I think this is doable because, you see, right now, the very, very strong presence of social media are the, uh, the South Koreans and the Japanese. And it has made an impact. So why not for, 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 for mainland Asia? You know, it's, it's, it's almost comforting in a very real sense. If you've been watching this telecast, you can now well understand that if you were traveling in the Philippines or traveling in Cambodia or in Thailand or in Bali, there would be so much that is familiar to any Indian. And if Thai and Cambodians and, and Filipinos were traveling in India, they would find so much familiarity because the modern conscience collectively has lost contact. And we now need to spend some time in re-establishing that contact and the good work uh, that um, uh, uh, Mrs. Mr. Stephen Patrick Fernandez and his uh, repertoire are, of course, doing in this regard. As always, sir, pleasure to have you on this uh, telecast. Thank you. Uh, appreciate your time once again. Stephen Pat uh, Patrick Fernandez joining us from the Philippines. My thanks uh, to Dr. M. Rameswaran of the Khmer Tamil Sangam in Cambodia and also to our reporter, uh, Nehru, did a good job uh, getting us that detail of the temple in the capital Phnom Penh, told us where the name of the capital also comes of a derivative of Sanskrit. Fascinating. Appreciate, appreciate those thoughts. We take a very, very quick break. We're not going anywhere. On the other side of this telecast, we now head across the seas once again. See you in 30 seconds.
For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.